Welcome to episode two. In this episode, we're diving into how to integrate Prism for Blender for project management, version control, and streamlining your workflow. Prism is a powerful asset management tool that can help you organize your files, track your versions, and manage your projects, whether you're working solo or as part of a team. I'll be walking you through the entire process from installation, setting up your assets, shots, and rendering, so you can get the most out of Prism while keeping your projects neat and efficient. All right, so the first step you're gonna take is to head over to the Prism website. The link will be provided in the video's description. Uh, once you're on the page, you'll see a simple overview of Prism and its features. If you just scroll down, you can see what Prism offers and you'll see things like integration details, sort of available plugins and all the other tools. So to get started, just click on Get Prism. Um, it's completely free, so you can just go ahead and download the installer. After the download finishes, you'll have an executable file and there's no zip files or anything complicated. You just get a straightforward EXE. If you go ahead and click on that to install Prism, it's perfectly safe and it will just open a setup wizard. You just accept the license agreement and then choose where you want to install it. It'll most likely be on your default C drive, for example. Once the installation is complete, you'll get a confirmation message. And from there, just click launch Prism. If this is the first time launching Prism, you'll be greeted with the setup screen. Here's where you'll need to install the plugins for your different softwares. You'll need to navigate to the Prism Hub page where you'll need to register for an account. Once you're logged in, you'll see the available add-ons and integrations. We obviously want Blender, so if you just click Install for Blender, confirm the installation, and you should be pretty good to go. Now that the integration is done, you'll be presented with the option to create a new project or browse for existing ones. We can go ahead and create a new project, and just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to make a new project called Test Project 001. And then you can just select your project path, and you can even add a thumbnail, but for now we're just going to skip that. The default settings are perfectly fine to start with, but you can always go back and change these later. Once the project is created, you'll have the option to open it either in Explorer or browser. I recommend using the project browser since that's where all of your project details will be neatly organized and operated from. Now, if you just head over to options and settings, we need to configure something called the DCC apps. This is where you'll tell Prism which version of Blender you'll be using. It will give you a sample path, but basically you'll need to locate where your Blender is installed and point Prism to the right executable file. This again can vary depending on where you've installed Blender originally, whether it's on your C or D drive or elsewhere. So at this point, it's also really vital to make sure that both your Prism integrations and executable override fields are both filled out with the correct version of Blender that you plan to use for this project. The integration section should be directed to and contain the main folder for each of your different Blender versions. So you can see here that I have my Blender 3.6.11 folder added. And then the executable override should be directed to the Blender's executable application file itself, which you can find inside of that download folder. We do this so that Prism knows which application to open when opening up your Blender scenes. You'll need to do this for every version of Blender you want Prism integrated into, and you'll need to make sure that the correct executable application is selected too when switching between the different versions of Blender. Once you've gone ahead and done that, everything should be set up to work seamlessly. So let's go over some other settings that we may find inside of Prism. So for example, you can set up Prism to automatically create thumbnails when saving, or you can enable autosave pop-ups, and there are plenty of other basic preferences you can adjust as needed. You can also go ahead and configure project structure here, things like your default departments and tasks. These are useful if you are working with multiple team members. So for example, you can set up default departments for concept art, modeling, rigging, and many more. So let's go ahead and create an asset. In Prism, an asset could be basically anything from a character to an environment or a prop, whatever you're working on really. So you can right click uh, in this space here and create a new folder. Let's just call it props. You can also go ahead and create a couple more folders for your characters and environments. Now we can actually create an asset underneath this. So let's right click on props and let's just do something simple uh, like a street cone for this example. You can add a thumbnail and a description if you like, but for now, we're just going to skip those. Next, Prism will ask you what department the task belongs to. 
In this case, we're doing modeling and texturing. So I'm gonna assign those departments into this section here. Of course, if you need additional departments, you can always add them later and Prism will remember these for future assets. Once we set that up, we can actually move straight into Blender. The cool thing here is that Prism gives us version control out of the box. So we can go ahead and right click, create a new version from preset, and we can then click on the blank Blender scene. When I go into the Prism tab at the top of the page and hit the save button, Prism automatically creates a new version of the file. If I make more changes, Prism will continue to version up, keeping everything organized and easy to manage as long as you save through Prism. It's useful because you can always roll back to previous versions if needed, and each version will have a thumbnail preview so you can see what the scene looked like at the time of saving. Now, if we head back into Prism, there are several other tools that you can use like the State Manager. This is where you can import or link assets between different scenes, similar to Blender's append and link system, but with fully integrated into Prism's project management. It also gives you the option for exporting, so you can export things like an entire scene or just certain selected objects. This is definitely useful if you're exporting models to other formats like FBX or Alembic, or if you want to publish a final master version of an asset. Prism lets you publish a master version of the scene as well, so anytime you update or republish, it will overwrite the previous master. All your rendering can also be done through Prism too, as Prism has its own render management system inside of the state manager, so you don't even need to mess with Blender's output or render settings. You can easily select your frame range, camera, resolution and format, and you're pretty much good to go. Prism even supports play blasts and queuing multiple renders, making it a really versatile tool for project management in Blender. So when we've finished adding and working on our assets, you can move into the shots area. Creating a shot is similar to creating an asset, and this is where you'll be doing your previous shot creation, layout, and any animation work. So you can create new departments and tasks just simply by right-clicking into the areas, typing in the name of the department or task, and just hitting create. From there, we can just go ahead and right click inside the files window, hover over create new version from preset, and then just choose the empty blender scene preset that's already provided for us by Prism. Before we move on to the next section, I just want to briefly touch on how we can utilize Prism for play blasting and rendering. This is just going to be like a quick whistle stop tour and we'll be getting into more detail with Prism for rendering later on in the series. You can just start by uh, doing a really simple camera animation, just using the default camera and the default cube in an empty scene. For speed, we can just use the track 2 constraint to keep the camera's focus on the cube for now. Then you can just set a keyframe for the camera's location at the beginning of the timeline, move the camera along on the Y axis, and then you can just key those location values at the end of the timeline. We can also just set the interpolation to linear so that we get a nice continued motion without any kind of ramping. So when you're happy with the animation, we can go ahead and turn on our metadata options so that we can have important data like focal length and frame number burnt into the renders. This is pretty crucial for previews and also for client editing purposes, and we'll be covering this in more detail later on in the series. You'll find the metadata inside of the output tab. Select whichever data you need from the list provided and make sure to tick on burn into image. You can also change things like font size and color here as well. So when you're ready to go ahead and play blast or render, you can go up to the prism tab and then just select state manager. Then if you drop down the export window, you can choose between render or play blast. Uh, for this section of the tutorial, we're just going to select play blast for now. And you'll see that the play blast render settings have showed up on the right. Here's where we can change the frame range, um, select which camera you'll want to use for your render if you have multiple, and choose your resolution and output format. Then you can add a comment to your render if you want to, to keep things organized. And then simply you can just right click on the play blast option we created and just hit execute. Once your play blast is completed, you'll be told that the execution was successful and that you can choose to go straight to your output. Uh, if we just click this option here and select media browser, you can see that your play blast has appeared and you can just double click in the thumbnail to open the render for a preview. And that's how you integrate Prism into Blender for project management. 
Whether you're working solo or in a team, Prism's tools help you keep everything organized and streamlined from start to finish. <laughs>